My name is M. Boyd Gillespie. I'm an olaryngologist, head and neck surgeon with Methodist Healthcare, and your health matters. Today I'll be talking about a new surgical procedure for patients with obstructive sleep apnea who are struggling with their CPAP device. Obstructive sleep apnea is a disorder of collapse of the throat during sleep. It prevents air and oxygen from getting to people's lungs, and because of that, it has severe health consequences. We know that about 24% of adult men and 10% of adult women suffer from sleep apnea. Uh, it causes loud snoring, daytime sleepiness, and can cause severe health effects such as high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and weight gain. Well, there's many causes of obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, some causes are from tissue crowding in the throat, such as large tonsils. Other people have genetic reasons to have sleep apnea. Some people have small jaws that crowd their airway. So part of treating sleep apnea is to uh, interview each individual patient and determine the reasons why they have the disorder. Certainly we know that patients as they gain weight are more at risk of sleep apnea. So most people if they gain weight will start to snore and then could develop uh, obstructive sleep apnea. However, there are a lot of people who are normal weight or even thin who because this runs in their family can have the disorder as well. So really anyone who is a nightly snorer is at risk of obstructive sleep apnea and should be evaluated. Obstructive sleep apnea is a very serious condition. We know from studies that have followed patients for many years that if you compare a group of patients who get appropriate treatment for sleep apnea to a group of people with sleep apnea who don't get treatment, that group that does not have treatment has much higher rates of death over the course of five to 10 years. So that's why we intervene. We try to uh, prevent premature death but also improve people's quality of life. Uh, it is a condition that causes severe daytime sleepiness. It can affect people's work and, and social activities. So by uh, providing appropriate treatment, we really improve people's quality of life. Most patients with moderate to severe sleep apnea are at risk of a greater chance of premature death if they don't have treatment of their sleep apnea. So, all of these patients, we prescribe CPAP, which is a, a mask that fits over the mouth and nose and provides pressurized air uh, to treat their sleep apnea. That's considered the first line therapy. Unfortunately, about one in three patients who try CPAP really struggle with the device. And there can be many reasons why patients struggle. It can cause nasal stuffiness. It can make people feel like they're choking. Some people feel claustrophobic with the mask on. Uh, other people have trouble having the mask fit appropriately to their face. So regardless of the reason, uh, a large percentage of patients do struggle with CPAP and for those patients, we really need to try to find alternative therapy so that they're at, not at undue risk from the sleep apnea. Upper airway stimulation is one of the more exciting new developments in the treatment of sleep apnea. It's a small implantable device similar to a pacemaker. It's placed underneath the skin of the upper chest and it has a small electrode tunneled underneath the skin that attaches to one of the major nerves of the throat. At night, patients have a remote control. They can turn on their device and go to sleep. And when they're asleep, it provides pulses of energy that keeps the tongue from falling back into the throat. The device uh, was under study for the last five years. It was approved by the FDA in uh, 2014, and we've been following the initial patients who've had implantation, and the results have been very impressive. It shows that it has uh, cure rates very similar to CPAP, and these were for patients who had tried CPAP and weren't able to tolerate it. So not everyone's a candidate uh, for upper airway stimulation. The, the best candidates are people with moderate to severe sleep apnea. So we want to make sure that they have severe enough apnea that uh, an intervention like this is justified. Also patients can be a little overweight, but we don't uh, want them to be uh, grossly overweight because we found that it doesn't work as well in people who are grossly overweight. And the third is we really want people to have tried the first line therapy CPAP 
and shown us that it doesn't work because CPAP is still a wonderful therapy. We're not trying to replace CPAP, but we're truly trying to offer an alternative to patients who have tried it and not done well. Out of all the patients that I have uh, placed this device in thus far, uh, most have recognized improvement from the first night that they use it. Uh, uh, the bed partners are often the first to notice because the snoring disappears. The patient wakes up feeling much more refreshed and energized and many people state that they feel better than they've felt in 20 years.